Hey guys, this is Jen from Scan and Cut Canvas and Scal Help on Facebook. Alright, I'm going through and redoing some of my old videos. Um, let me get this off of here. And I want to redo some of my vinyl ones. Alright, so this is HTV Heat Transfer Vinyl. And you see it has a really super shiny side. And then it has this kind of grayish, mattish look to it. Alright. Let me see if I can grab some other types of sheets here and get some of my junk kind of wrinkly ones. All right, here, this is, this is what we call foil. It's a really pretty color. This is just regular black, okay? But still, it's super shiny on one side. Has this dull kind of almost like adhesive looking side. This is the side that goes towards your garment. Okay, this is the carrier sheet that is actually on this HTV. When you cut this, your shiny sheet, your carrier sheet, goes down onto the mat. Okay, because when you go to cut this, let me flip it around. I got a bad spot over there. When you go to cut this, you're going to do what we call a kiss cut. And that means you put the blade deep enough to just kiss the vinyl to cut it. And you're not cutting through that clear carrier sheet. Because what you need to do, let me see if I can pull this out of here. Because what you want to do is... You want to pull this sheet, you want to pull this vinyl off of here, okay? See this clear sheet? You want to leave that attached to the stuff that you're going to put onto your t-shirt, okay? So this carrier carries your design to your t-shirt so that you can place it appropriately. Now, there will be times that it doesn't matter if you cut through it. If your design is big enough, say you got a gigantic football, if you cut through it, that's fine. There are times that I will set my blade to cut through it so I don't have to weed it, okay? Because it's a large enough design, I don't need to worry about it. But, the designs I'm doing today, I do not want to cut through the carrier sheet. So, in our group we have our settings based on low and slow, low speed, low pressure. Um, we found by constant, consistent use of our machines, Nicola and I, that low speed and low pressure will take you anywhere you want to go with these machines. So with mine, uh, HTV settings, heat transfer vinyl, my speed I keep at a 1 for pretty much everything now. Um, I found that that really responds to anything that I want to cut. The lower the speed, our blade sits in the holder, okay, like this. It's got a magnet at the top, all right? So pretend that this is the cutting edge right here. So it floats in there, and as it turns... Okay, so does that blade. Well, if it's going so fast, sometimes you see it needs to turn. Well, if it's going too fast, sometimes it won't turn when you need it to, and that will cause your blade to snap, all right? So if you carry really high speeds, you may notice you break blades an awful lot. A speed of one allows that blade to go through, turn when it needs to, and make the appropriate cuts. The same thing with pressure. Okay, <clears throat> if you have a high pressure shoving that blade down, okay, and it's carving through there with a high speed, you are definitely going to break some blades. We lighten that pressure up, allow that blade to float through your material. You're not going to have the rips, you're not going to have the snags, you're not going to have the tears. It's going to allow that blade to freely float through there and allow it to cut, all right? Okay, so now we have our HTV on here. HTV goes this way, shiny sheet down. Let me get a regular 
piece of vinyl somewhere. Okay. This is this is regular vinyl. It's got crap all over it. Regular vinyl has a white backing. When we cut regular vinyl, it goes white side down to the mat. Do not remove the backing. That will be an awful mess. Probably won't even be able to get it off. But put your vinyl down just like that. Do not mirror your image. Okay. Unless you're doing a, a different kind of design. And if you're on our group, you'll understand what I mean about that. All right. So put your design the right way. When you're doing HTV, you mirror the design, okay? Because if you're cutting it this way, you do not want it right reading. Because, oops, there goes the cat. When it's right reading this way, when you flip it around, it's going to be wrong reading, okay? So make sure that you mirror that image when you're putting it in HTV. All right, so I have my pressure set at a minus one, my speed is set at a one, and my blade depth is set at about a half to a one. You will want to check what yours is. Um, we recommend a test cut just to t check like for your blade depth. Test cuts a lot of times don't tell you if it's going to make it all the way through the design. A lot of times I found that it'll cut really good up here in this corner. Then when I get down here, it may not have cut all the way through. So what you'll see me do is when it's finished cutting and it's still setting in the machine, I'll bring my pick and I'll pick at certain parts. If it has not went all the way through, I leave this mat in my machine and I'll hit cut again take that blade maybe a half tick deeper see how it goes okay then I remember those settings you can write them down if you want I just happen to remember mine okay all right so let's head to the machine okay here we are at the machine let me grab my stylus okay let's go to pattern now um this is a word of caution to you there is a very bad word in this file. This is not my file. Uh, this is my sister-in-law, what she once made up for her friend. So if you see the bad word, just be forewarned, it is a bad word. Okay, so pattern, save data. The media is not inserted. Oh, well, let's see here, look. There's my cord and there's my stick. But do you notice anything? I have the lighted sticks and the lights not on hmm now if I didn't have a stick that lit up I'd say well guess what it's in there so it should be working right no let's redo it oh there's the light because my new little adopted dog freaks out when she hears any weird sound so she probably bumped it okay so now let's try it oh look there it is Okay, now how many of you have said, my file isn't there on my machine? Remember I said it can be huge, example, example, or not there, all of these examples, but it's really there. There, that's where it is, okay? So this has already been set up for my 24 inch mat, but Let's just say you plugged in your thing and this comes up. Uh-oh. So you're coming through here and you think, uh-oh, pattern cannot be cut or drawn. Okay, to continue, well, why? I have my 24-inch mat and my 24-inch design. Why won't it let me cut? <sighs> what am I going to do? Well, this is what this means. When it's blacked out, you got to go back in here though it won't let you do it in that screen you got to turn on your 12 by 24 mat and then you'll be good to go see now it's freed up in there okay and I have it already see this is nice and bright black lines no gray so that means it's all fitting in there 
and it's already been mirrored. I mirrored that inside sure cuts a lot. Now it's ready to cut. Okay. See that horribly bad word in there? Okay, so I have a cut and I'm going to let it cut and we're going to see how that goes. I also want to note, you can add weeding boxes if you want. There are uh, a few times that I will add weeding boxes. However, I prefer not to. Um, if I notice that I have um, like a, a design that uh, I want to try to save some space, I will go in and hand cut. I personally do not like weeding boxes. It is a personal preference though. I do have videos that show you how to add weeding boxes. Also, um, how to do weeding and reverse weeding. Um, there is a new technique that I have to do a video on and I actually have to go get all the stuff to set that up. Um, but I do have videos on every single technique. Whether I prefer them or not has no basis. Um, if you want to use them, go watch the video and then you can insert them into these videos as they go along. All right. Okay, so there's the finished cutting sign. Ugh. But let's come down here. Let me open this camera view up a little bit. Let's find an edge and let's peel it. And what I'm looking for is a nice clean peel, just like that. Okay, so that one's good. Come over here. And if this didn't cleanly peel, like, so this one's cut fine. Let's come up here, pull one of the letters away. Okay, so that one cleanly comes away. Let me pull this side over here. Okay, and if it cuts <clears throat> cleanly on, say, this side, and I get over here and it's hanging up, what that tells me is I need to recalibrate my scan and cut head. And that is in your tools uh, little button here. You hit this hit the little wrench thing and I think it's on like page four but I wanted to kind of let you know that because I've seen a lot of questions about that if it's cutting really good on one side or one spot and then the other side doesn't recalibrate that cut head all right so finish cutting okay let's eject it get rid of that okay okay and then you know you can go about weeding this however you want um, I usually look to see if there's any spots anywhere I want to try to save, but um, I usually position my stuff to try to get the best use out of my vinyl. Um, and if I have like multiple designs, I try to position them on here so that I'm not wasting any vinyl. Um, now my next thing is I want to uh, use that new uh, techniques that my friends over at Stalls told me about. Okay guys, <clears throat> now, I have Glitter HTV, which I know you all love to weed. I hate it. Makes my eyeballs hurt. Okay, so, let me bring you down in here. Okay. You cannot see any of my cut lines. Okay, I can because what I'm doing right now as I am looking this way across it. So I can clearly see all of my cut lines. But sometimes older folks or people that have problems with their vision can't see them. Alright? So we're going to go through a couple of ways to possibly help you. Okay? And this, um, I'm also going to include uh, one of the stalls techniques and see if I can't help you maybe make your own type of thing. All right, but the first thing that we're going to use is this, okay? You can take your HTV, make sure everything is squared up. What you don't want is you don't want it to wrinkle like this and then pull because you'll crease your vinyl. But grab it, hold it like this, pull it over the edges of the table a couple times. Then do it this way. This way sometimes you might get a wrinkle or two. So just be careful. Be very, very careful. Okay, do it like that. I don't really know a difference. Some people say they do. Then 
Let me see. I gotta look for it. Got so much crap up here. I'm surprised I can find anything. Okay, this is my favorite way to do it. I use baby powder, and you don't have to worry about baby powder because there is no adhesive. You can use cornstarch. Um, there is no adhesive on the uh, HTV. It's uh, done by heat, so you don't need to worry about it not sticking to something. Okay, I will do this and start to kind of go over this ever so slightly and see if we can start to see what's happening here. Oh my god, this stuff stinks. Okay, and you will actually see the lines now. Well, of course, there's where you got wrinkled. But you can actually see, maybe. <laughs> Hopefully, yeah. Get my fat little hand out of the way. Okay, I can see these little cut lines right here. You can see the name. All right, so I'm going to keep on going. And there's the top cut lines coming out. All the way across. It might be hard for the camera to capture it. Okay, here's the cut lines on the bottom. You can see there's a line that comes and goes all the way down here and around. One that comes up here. It might not be showing really well on the camera. It's hard for me to see. But you can see all the swirls in the letters all through here. Okay? This camera. I don't know if that gives you a better angle. But you can see the design right here. And you can also see all the swirls there. All right. So this actually works better for me. Um, you can try it and see what you think. And then uh, the next one I'm going to show you is the use of heat. Um, now with heat, you have to be careful. Um, and you can just use a heating pad with this. It's not the burning thing that I'm worried about. Um, what you have to be careful with with using the heat is you don't want everything to fully release off of the uh, carrier sheet. And with heat, that is possible. Um, if you have one of those aim, point and shoot temperature guns, you're going to want to use it. You want a, um, I'm trying to remember now, 110 degrees if you have a lot of fine detail in your HTV. Um, up to 130 degrees for gross detail, which means large detail. Um, but what the heat does is that releases it. And a lot of you, if you have accidentally stored your HTV in a hot environment or at the sun, you may notice like the edges starting to curl in and pull away from your vinyl. That is why. Heat causes it to release. That's why it's heat transfer vinyl. The heat makes it release off of this paper, okay? The, off of the carrier sheet. So that's why the heat will allow it to um, be weeded a little easier. All right, I need to pause and shut this off and clean up all this junk. Okay, so I have my heating pad on and I have it set on the high setting. So I'm letting it warm up now. There is another technique um, using a light box. Um, I haven't had any success using that. If you do, great. Go ahead and keep on using it. Um, but I found that my um, glitter HTV is too thick um, to get any benefits from that. And usually it's the glitter HTV that I have the most difficulty with. Um, 
for like oh uh, weeding this foil uh, this was really really easy to weed um, you can clearly see the lines uh, and all that good stuff so it's usually this glitter that's a real pain in the rumpus um, I have one of those pointed temperature things but of course my boys must have taken it so I'll just have to go by feel and keep my eye on it but I put this towel over it to help hold that heat in there so I'll come back when we're ready to rock and roll while we're waiting for this to heat up I did want to mention that um, when you're doing if you're gonna do um, this uh, heating pad way you need to make sure that your cuts are um, completely clean um, that there's no snags or no miscuts because when you start peeling this off um, if there are some that are still attached and they start to pull you do run a very high risk of ruining this um, cut because you can pull the whole thing off and to try to put it back well um, that cannot go so good for you also if you are using a um, just a static um, type of carrier not the adhesive carrier and there are great differences trust me um, the non adhesive kind they're called frosted carriers um, it's not going to work real well um, and if you go to start pulling it off you may end up pulling your entire design off so just be careful um, and test this out maybe on little test pieces before you go um, putting your whole um, good design on that you've worked really hard on okay okay so I just measured the temperature I have a <laughs> I use a meat thermometer and stuck it in there and let it measure it and um, it measured at 140 but I'm not seeing anything popping you know to help you with being able to see the lines now I understand it helps you to weed this but as far as it goes being able to see the lines not so much okay so that's where the problem lies with most of you is being able to see the lines to weed your glitter so my best suggestion to you is to pull out your hang on I am like flinging stuff everywhere in my room pull out your powder <laughs> that's my little shadow that's my new family member and she literally is my shadow I keep tripping over pull out your powder we're gonna do this again so I can see what I'm doing pull out your powder and you can see you can see these lines clearly try to get you some light down here go over this oops there goes my phone aren't you guys talking to me And go both ways and that will help you see the lines that you need to weed let me grab the camera so I can make sure you guys can see what I'm seeing here okay Try to get all this off my hands. Sorry, hang on, hang on. Ooh. Okay, now can you see those lines? They're very clear. You can clearly see what you need to weed now. Okay, so that's my best suggestion for those of you that are having a dickens of a time trying to find your weeding lines um, in glitter vinyl baby powder 
baking soda, um, what's that other stuff, uh, cornstarch, anything like that. It's not going to hurt um, when you go to put it on your uh, shirt or your material, whatever you need. Um, just weed it, wipe it off, whatever you need to do, okay? It's not going to hurt it. Um, all right, so I think that's about all I can tell you um, with vinyl, cutting it, weeding it, um, what side goes where, depth of your blades, um, pressure, speed, um, everything. Um, if you have any questions, come and find us over at Scan and Cut Canvas and Scal Help on Facebook. Um, we'll work with you to get you through uh, any sticky spots that you may have um, with your machine because each of the machines are different um, and they respond there. Now you can really see those lines. That's a better angle. See that? You can see the design down there and across the top. Perfect. Okay, but the machines are different. They re <laughs> Somebody's got a burning question for me evidently. Um, but they respond differently um, and sometimes you know things just they act differently with each machine so uh, but we'll work with you to be able to get you to handle your machine and know what you need to do when certain things pop up okay guys thanks a lot have a good day